this did you do it it's october 22nd 2018 and it is proposed and substantiated don't you know that an extraterrestrial object of the approximate size and mass of planet mars impacting the earth in an oblique angle along an approximately northeast southwest route with respect to the current orientation of the North American continent, around 750 million years ago, is likely to be the direct cause of a chain of events which led to the rifting of the Rodinia supercontinent and the severing of the foundation of the Colorado Plateau from its surrounding craton. Now, the word substantiated, to me, means that it's pretty much been proven, okay? And this bit where it's been severed from the foundation of the Colorado well, from the surrounding craton indicates to me it's a separate unit now okay now it is also further further argued that the impactor most likely originated as a rogue exoplanet produced during one of the past crossings of our solar system through the galactic spiral arms in its orbital motion around the center of the milky way galaxy recent work has shown that the sites of galactic spiral arms are locations of density wave collisionless shocks the perturbations from such shock are known to lead to the formation of massive stars, which evolve quickly and die as supernova. The blast waves from, su from supernova explosions, in addition to the collisionless shocks at the spiral arms, can perturb the orbits of the streaming disk matter, occasionally producing rogue exoplanets that can reach the inner confines of our solar system. Now, as much as I'd like to talk about that there tonight, I just I just can't do that without bringing up the Hopi ancestors, the Anunnaki, the Anasazi, and Naughty Beaver. Well, Naughty Beaver does a lot on the Hopi prophecies and legends, and I cannot talk about the crate, the Colorado Plateau, without including the Hopi Indians. Okay, so tonight what I'm going to do is I think this is pretty important. I'm going to take you over to Steve's site, WSO. And he did a uh, video today about uh, Geosat shows something below Earth flying around. I'm going to try to go through this pretty quickly. I, did, I happened to do a, uh, a video about four months ago. I'm not going to ask that you go view it or anything like that. But it's called the Keep Out Zone. And 183 views. Well, apparently Steve probably hasn't seen this yet or doesn't even want to. But hey, here's a bunch of links down here that talks about this this event that's been occurring on the Himawari 8 side and the GOES 16 side. Now, the first page I'm going to take you to is one of the links for sure. Is this one here. Now, I know it's, it's called the Solar Interference Prediction for 2015 Autumn Eclipse Period. It's from the, the Meteorological Satellite Center in Japan, J the Japanese Meteorological Association. It says the AHI solar interference prediction for 2015 autumn eclipse periods are shown below. Quick guide to figures. Now, that's there's a lot in there. I've seen it, but um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you at the very bottom where the location was of the supposed interference back in 2015. Now, this is October 20th and 2015. Now, 1410 UTC is... Right around the time he, he he showed it over on his channel. Okay, so now this doesn't mean anything. This is 2015. But the whole deal is they went into a, a lot, of, they spent a lot of effort on providing this predictive eclipse schedule. And I often wondered why. I mean, why do they put so much time and effort into this uh, prediction of something that's supposedly, hey, it's just the sun. You know, the sun is overpowering the instruments. No big deal. Type it out in words and just let me have it. Why are you going to go through all these pictures and diagrams and, and predictions? Well, I'll tell you why. Because they're in bed with these people. Okay, the same thing's happening over on the GOES Eclipse side. And Cosmic Antenna and myself have been watching this for a long time. She does some outstanding work on there. She's got some uh, some videos about the GOES-16 satellite signatures. And uh, I'd like you to go over there and check her out. She's got some real good work. She puts a lot of it to music, and uh, it's great. But let's see, go back to this. Uh, I would not have found this particular page had I not found this page. 
All right. Well, they try to explain the best they can. I think it's uh, there's a certain amount of truth to it, but I just don't believe it's the sun. It's either the sun simulator or our second sun or whatever. You know, it could be this. It could be this right here. Uh, just a minute. I'm sorry to show you. It could be the world's largest sun simulating device over in Germany. All right. Or it could be our second sun. I don't know. But uh, they went through an awful lot of effort to try to explain it away. And I'm just, it just smells funny to me. But there's official stories out there. There's official stories out there. And I'm going to provide this link for, for you guys. And this link. And that's all they are, official stories. I'm not saying whether I believe them all or not or whatever. And then I'm going to give you this link here. It's to the Japanese Meteorological Association. And... You really had to look hard here to find that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to leave you this link here. And also I had to do some pretty serious snooping around down here to find, well, what, where are we at? I'm sorry. This. Okay, the sun interference. Sun passes behind the JCSAT-2B communication satellite C-band. is seen from, oh, blah, 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 they'll tell you. I'm going to give you this link, which also provides another link. This is going to take you here to the Sun Interference page. I'm going to give you a link right to this page. This is all information you could read through if you wanted to, you know, the, the official version of what's going on over at Steve's site. All right. Now, what I've been suspecting myself is that, you know, it may well be a Sun simulating device, but... Uh, you know, that's overpowering the satellites. But one issue that I do have is that they did spend a lot of time putting this together for us. You know, and it's like, why are you going to do that? You know, it's just an awful lot of work for something that's supposed to be all natural. Now, being in 2015, our GO satellite didn't get launched until 2016. So... They've had all this time prior to the launch of Go 16 to to reconfigure their equipment, you know, and account for this account for this uh, overpowering of the instrument. But they never did that. They just launched it up there, just knowing full well it was going to, you know, have these interferences and false signatures. I just don't believe it. I think there's some horse shit in here somewhere. It just smells funny. Okay, but I'm going to give you all these links and. Uh, you know, Steve, I love your work. Well, I hope this helps out. You got the official uh, official story now, and um, appreciate your time. Uh, go out, go over and check out Cosmic Antenna's channel, and uh, go look at Naughty Beaver, too. He's got a lot of the Hopi prophecy stuff. But I really do want to get back to this Colorado Plateau, and this idea that it's been severed from the surrounding craton is very important. Um... And we'll get to that later. So did you do it?